In the dense urban setting of Singapore's Toa Payo, tensions reached a boiling point when 63-year-old T.G. Chuan, living on the fifth floor, took matters into his own hands in what became a highly unusual display of frustration. Late on June 12, T., armed with a hammer, stormed up to the sixth floor, believing his neighbor was responsible for disturbing noises from above. This moment turned into an incident far beyond a typical noise complaint, involving property damage, a police response, and a surprising outcome in court. What pushed T to go this far? And how did this event become part of a larger pattern of troubling behavior? Viewers, let us know what you think about neighborhood disputes and mental health support in community settings. Should more resources be available for those in similar situations? And how should neighbors respond to repeated disruptions? If you've ever experienced a similar situation, your perspective would add real insight to this discussion. Please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing to keep updated on the full story. At 2230, we're dedicated to bringing you thorough, unbiased news coverage. After the June 12th incident, T's actions, captured by a CCTV camera from a neighboring flat, became key evidence. In the footage, T is seen banging forcefully on the window, door, and even the water pipe, escalating the situation as sounds echoed loudly throughout the building. However, nobody was home in the unit T targeted, and he didn't seem deterred by that. But what's even more unexpected is how the situation escalated after the police were notified by a concerned seventh-floor resident. Police investigations found that T had a history of confrontations with neighbors, some with intense outcomes. Earlier in 2021, T damaged his next-door neighbor's belongings and even threatened her with a 70 centimeters blade when the police intervened. Then, in January 2024, T reportedly set fire to this same neighbor's flat due to his irritation with her loud conversations. This pattern of escalating actions eventually led to T's arrest and psychiatric evaluation, where he was diagnosed with a psychotic disorder. Despite this diagnosis, authorities concluded that his mental health condition did not play a direct role in his recent actions, raising further questions about how to manage repeated confrontations like these in a residential setting. T's case concluded with an eight-month jail sentence and a 4,000 Singapore dollar fine. But his neighbors and the local town council chose not to seek compensation, even though there was property damage. Perhaps they simply wanted closure, hoping this would end the series of disturbing incidents. It's a compelling example of the challenges faced by densely packed communities, where a single issue can escalate into something unexpected and severe. What are your thoughts on this? Should neighbors be more proactive in addressing such issues early on? Or is there a different approach that should be taken? Please let us know in the comments, and don't forget to hit the like button if you found this coverage insightful. Be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to keep up with detailed coverage from 2230.